violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. Um, so as you can see, guys, I'm going to show you this uh, Zoom call. It kind of sums up the attitude of a lot of these uh, criminals now. Um, they're not just emboldened when it comes to larger crimes or, or crimes that incur a heftier penalty. They're emboldened to the petty crimes. And this is a pure example of such so let's get into it okay are you are you driving right now yeah you're suspended and you're in court first of all interrupting the court so this guy <laughs> is in zoom court which this is why a lot of these criminals are able to get off because they don't have to show up to court they just get on a zoom call it's so much less impersonal. They're not meeting the judge face to face. They, they, the the weight of accountability is basically pushed back. Okay, and they don't really have to face a lot of things that they're doing. Like you know, in driving on a suspended license, um, it sounds like something petty, but it can be an indicator that these people are out here committing other crimes. Okay, that's why. Traffic po patrol police and stuff like that is important um, because people who will commit traffic infractions usually are, you know, willing or able to commit other crimes. I'm not even driving. I'm parking somebody's car because they couldn't park. That's all I was doing. Hey, my car is it's, it's, it's a female car. Parking in the tight spot for it. All right. I'm going to need you to park your car and get out of the car. Okay. It, so <laughs> he was in his girl's car or the woman that he's dealing with's car. I mean, he absolutely doesn't care. I mean, you know, and I'm not saying he's a bad guy, but it, it, it's it's a representation of the way that a lot of these folks out here, it, like the, they're taking the criminal justice system as a joke. But but we're supposed to be convinced that we are oppressed in this, that, and the third. It's like. Bro, when you got folks driving on a suspended license, still driving, don't care, like still on that hot stuff, it's like, bro, whoa. we can't even help you at this point. If you're having a bad day, just say that. Oh, I'm not you know having a bad day, day until you started talking while driving at the same time that you're suspended. Look, and he, <laughs> this man went and talked back to the judge and look at the other guy in court who's laughing it looks like this other brother uh tyler lewis you know i don't know he might be in court as well um and he might be like next up to get whatever sentencing or punishment or letting them know the terms i don't know how these zoom courtrooms work okay are you are you driving right now yeah you're suspended and you're in court First of all, interrupting the court. I'm not even driving. I'm parking somebody's car because they couldn't park. That's all I was doing. <laughs> hey, my car is it's, it's, it's a female car. Parking in the tight spot for it. All right. I'm going to need you to park your car and get out of the car. Okay? If you're having a bad day, just say that. I, oh, I I'm not having a bad day, day until you started talking while driving at the same time that you're suspended. You see, Tyler Lewis think it's funny. Uh, and I'm showing you guys this video as well, because this one is kind of another um, indicator of the state of the culture. We definitely got the single moms out here, and they are, I guess they're bringing their kid to work um, around hot grease, other people's food, bringing a baby, you know, who could be coughing, burping, all types of stuff, pooping, peeing, like, to a restaurant. I mean, it's different out here. Ain't no fucking way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy. Uh, excuse the language. But yeah, Shorty has her kid at work. Um, she has she has on a different color than the other worker, so she might be a manager. But I mean, this is what not staying with the father looks like. 
or choosing a bad mate. It's one of the two. Either way, or maybe he left. We never know. But at the end of the day, and that's a real light-skinned baby too. So I don't know. The daddy might be white. But she, this is ratchet. I mean, I can't, I can't say anything else, but <laughs> it's ratchet. You know, I guess she can't afford, afford a daycare. So she brings the kid to work. I honestly, I don't know how I feel about it because I know she got to make a living. And, you know, I always say, hey, you know, these these women shouldn't leave their kid with anybody. And, and maybe she really doesn't have anybody to drop the kid off with. But these students behind me aren't taking a skip day. They're actually suspended from school for planning a protest against racism that they say they experience inside their school and on campus in Floyd County. So as you can see, um, you know, we got a few community activists in the working and, <laughs> you know, they're saying that they were suspended for protesting racism or the Confederate flag or whatnot. Um, those two aren't necessarily intertwined just because a white dude has a Confederate flag doesn't mean he's racist, uh, contrary to popular belief. <clears throat> and I remember I was back in that mindset where I thought that as well. But then, you know, I seen a white dude with a Confederate flag towel and I pressed him on it. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I came around, you know, on that hot stuff and and really pressed him about it. And then we had we talked, we had a conversation and, you know, he 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 basically told me, how does it affect me if he has this Confederate flag towel like, why is this such a big deal? And I thought about it and it's, I'm like, you know what? It really isn't a big deal. Um, the way that they look at it is not necessarily racist, even though people are going to come in here and talk about all oh, the historical. You can tie this and this guy wore the Confederate flag and this guy. Look, we understand. We understand where it comes from. Y'all got the antebellum slavery mindset stuck in your head. And although it is a symbol that is triggering to a lot of um, people, it really only started becoming very trigger triggering in the last five to ten years so i don't know i mean it wasn't a big deal up until like five ten years ago and now it's just like this big thing honestly you see them all the time in the south you can't be in an uproar over every confederate flag you see this is what started it off students reportedly flying confederate flags and spewing racial slurs on campus at cusa high school earlier this week now if they was out there saying certain things i don't know but you know i'm not mad at them having a little protest the black students and white and latino classmates spoke up and planned a protest against racism i felt really disrespected how the school didn't do anything about it and when we're not allowed to wear BLM, BLM stuff all over ourselves, and then they are allowed to carry a, a racist flag around. Yeah, and, and that's a problem. You gotta, you gotta let everything ride. Like, if you're gonna let the Confederate flag ride, you gotta let them do the BLM thing, even though I don't rock with the BLM organization. Um, you, you gotta let everything ride. So that, that's definitely unfair. And that's why I did this story, because I wanted to point it out and and just show you guys that there are little things that are are um, giving people justification of why they're going so hard on the racial stuff. But it's just like, you know, two people holding the Confederate flag is like, bro, why didn't y'all just confront them two people? Early Friday morning, police had the campus lined, keeping the student protest line back. Administration had warned the day before it would clamp down, making this announcement. The administration is aware of tomorrow's planned protest. Activity of this kind will not be allowed here at Cusa High School. The announcement threatened disciplinary action for even having a flyer announcing the protest. Oh, even my mother is here. Students tell us they were suspended from making protest plans and arguing with the administration about racial slurs and the flag. Look, sisters, y'all got to stop trying to set it off. Every time you got a disagreement, when you're raising your voice and yelling and pointing your fingers and doing all this, like, that's probably why y'all got suspended because y'all over here, like, if they told y'all not to do it and y'all went against the rules, you knew there were disciplinary actions, even though it ain't fair, you can't come out in the back, you can't come on the back end and be, you know, yelling and screaming 
I feel like we got to start handling things more diplomatically, man. And and that's when people will take us seriously cuz it's like it's hard to take Shorty seriously when she's just da -da -da -da, you know what I mean? But students say those suspensions were only for certain kids, black students. All the African Americans that was up there, they they suspended them. They didn't suspend mm -hmm. me. They didn't suspend her either. The reason why I'm I'm sorry, but the reason why the white girls didn't get suspended is cuz they was not going buck wild. Maybe if they confronted y'all and y'all said, okay, boom, we ain't gonna have a protest, da, 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 we gonna dead it, whatever. Then it would have been all Gucci. But <laughs> they kept escalating, they kept pushing, and then when they get, hey, you gotta leave, you know, they're going hammer. I didn't see none of the white girls arguing like that. Maybe they were. I don't know, though. And we both disrupted all we the entry classes. Yeah, we were... Their parents tell us they were served suspension papers not only by the principal, but by police. I made multiple calls to the school district with no response. So I looked into the state data for suspensions in Floyd County. In 2020, it breaks it down by race. 8% of black students were suspended. Okay, okay. Um, they're showing the suspension stats. And I will say, man... Even when I was in high school, it, the the suspensions were definitely more black and Hispanics getting suspended. But in this one, it tells a little different tale. Eight percent black suspended or suspended. Six percent two or more races, which is mixed. So people would say, "Oh, if you gotta drop a black in you, you know what I mean." <laughs> Um, 4% white suspended and 2% Hispanic. So it looks like the Hispanics behavior is better than the whites. Um, so what this tells me is who is misbehaving more. I'm sorry, but if the whites get his or if the whites get, um, suspended at double the rate that the Hispanics do, that means the Hispanics are behaving better. If mixed race kids get suspended at, I don't know, like 30% higher than that, then that means that the mixed race people are behaving worse. So if it's 8% black students who are getting suspended, that means that they behave worse, two times worse than the white students. You know, just because these one these girls got suspended doesn't change the behavior problems that we have in the community um and i think everybody's aware of that if you're not then just go to a black school um i mean it's tough that they got suspended for this um this protest but at the end of the day the two people holding the confederate flag for one go confront those two you know it's not everybody in the school who is on that. For two, they didn't come in announcing that they were going to do that. They just pulled up with the flags and rocking it, okay? So that's why they probably didn't get suspended. Because they didn't they they weren't out here promoting it as if, you know, it was some organized thing even though the school told them not to promote it like you know, there's there's so many nuances with this. I'm not saying that this school isn't racist or anything like that. <laughs> I'm just saying that if you televise and if you broadcast, hey, we're going to do a procast, you you passing out flyers like you passing out like flyers to go to the club, then you're going to get caught. The highest number, 6% were two or more races, 4% white, 2% Hispanic. These students saying they want all of that to change. The parents tell us they're upset to know their complaints have gone unresolved so far, and now their kids will have to miss homecoming after being suspended from school. We'll have mm. more from the school's leadership on our CBS 46 app. Reporting in Floyd County, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. The news, all new at 6, an accused cop killer is now in custody in Georgia. In the past two hours, here are the pictures that we got of the arrest. The Georgia Department of Public Safety says a SWAT team captured 43-year-old Damian Luke Ferguson this afternoon. You can see him there <clears throat> in the handcuffs. So remember we did this um, this story on Mr. Ferguson, and he murked the cop on his first day of work. The cop had a whole family. Listen to why he did it. Just listen to why. I told you I'll keep you updated. We're not going to 
dwell on this for too long, but just listen to why he did it. It's crazy. We are told the arrest happened less than a mile from the Alamo Police Department in Wheeler County, and that is where police say Ferguson gunned down an officer. This is about 90 miles southeast of Macon. That officer was 26-year-old Dylan Harrison. He leaves behind a wife and a six-month-old. Authorities have not released details of what led to that shooting early Saturday morning. And guys, just on that police shooting, um, I did want to highlight that they revealed that Buddy killed the cop because he arrested his friend earlier. So it was in retaliation for arresting his friend. These dudes is on demon time. Gobert, a 19 year veteran of our department, was ambushed while in his patrol unit. Preliminary, preliminary information indicates that Trooper Gobert was shot and killed in the area in which an early morning homicide occurred. The suspect, 31 year old Matthew Meir, was taken into custody this evening shortly before 10, 10 p.m. So as you can see, man, um, it's, it's cops getting flatlined all over the country. And the Matthew Moore guy, honestly, that sounds like a white dude. Um, and apparently he was in the vicinity of another homicide, as the officer said. So, whew, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it, it, they taking the pigs fly or pigs fry rhetoric to the whole nother level. Preliminary information indicates that Trooper Gobert was shot and killed in the area in which an early morning homicide occurred. The suspect, 31-year-old Matthew Meir, was taken into custody this evening shortly before 10, 10 p.m. without incident. The department was ambushed while in his patrol unit. Preliminary, preliminary information indicates that Trooper Gobert was shot and killed in the area in which an early morning homicide occurred. The suspect, 31-year-old Matthew Meir, was taken into custody this evening shortly before 10, 10 p.m. without incident. An Orlando man is now in custody after leading troopers on a chase through several central Georgia counties. Georgia State Patrol says it began when Turner County deputies tried to stop a Hyundai from speeding on I-75. GSP says the driver didn't stop and a chase ensued through Dooley County and continued north on I-75. So I told you guys, man, these roads are dangerous, bro. They really are, man. You got to be aware of where you at, what you doing, man, because any of these dudes could just pull out. They run in front of police. Boom. I mean, they're endangering so many people going at high speeds, hundreds, hundred miles per hour. They like these high speed chases can get crazy. The chase went through Turner, Dooley, Crisp, Peach and Bibb counties. The chase ended in a crash on Thompson Road when the driver exited on I-475 in Bibb County. The driver identified as Deontay Caesar ran away from the crash but was arrested by troopers. The driver identified as Deontay Caesar. So the driver, Deontay Caesar, um, that's a pretty racially ambiguous name. Like he could be Hispanic. He could be black. Who knows? But um, the Deontays are out here wilding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, and the brothers in the Caesar Chavez community are wilding as well. Um, it, it's tough uh, that these situations keep going down, but. Honestly, like I said, I don't think it's gonna get, I don't think it's gonna get better before it gets worse. And we have too many examples of that. And you know, unfortunately. Now, investigators trying to figure out who was driving when a UGA student was killed in a hit and run crash. 20 year old Ariana Zarsi died early Saturday morning. And tonight we're learning more about what happened just a week after she helped raise thousands of dollars for charity. Channel 2's Ashley Lincoln live in Athens tonight at the scene of that crash on Broad Street. Ashley. So as you guys know, man, I'm in Athens and I heard about this joint. And you know, this girl, um, she was pretty well known. Um, she was a bartender out here. And it's, it's crazy because you could tell like that 
I went to the bar like um, the day after and it just had a different vibe, man, because I'm sure that they were mourning uh, this young girl who passed away. And apparently, you know, she was hit in a um, crossing the street on Broad Street. So, hey, man, like I said in the other video, bro, you got to watch where you're going. Make sure that when you're drunk, you know what I'm saying? You, you look in both ways. Even if it gives you the go sign on the crosswalk, you still got to look. You still got to pay attention because, you know, these um, hit and runs been happening a lot more often in Athens. Justin, difficult time for those who knew Zarcy. I want to show our viewers this little memorial that's starting out here. As you can see, someone has placed flowers out here at the spot where this horrible accident happened. According to police, they tell us that she was getting ready to cross this crosswalk. Dang, yeah, I know exactly where this is, man. So, sheesh, that's, that's going straight down broad past the train tracks here on Broad Street before a car came driving westbound and hitting her. She was saying about how what a high it was and it was the biggest high of her life. By unanimous decision. Oh, so she was fighting too. She was, oh shit. In the blue corner, Ari you don't know when you're with someone for their last seven days. It was a week ago. Keith Kepner says he was celebrating Ariana Zarsi's win of a charity boxing match. The fact that we got to share that with her was really beautiful. Today, friends of the 20 year old are leaning on those memories as they mourn after the University of Georgia student was killed by a car mm. while crossing this section of Broad Street near Foundry early Saturday morning. <clears throat> we all need to be reminded of this from this horrible experience about we never know when our last seven days are here or, you know, we're not going to be here tomorrow because it's a fact of life. Kepner says he trained Zarcy for two months to prepare her for that charity boxing match. Very positive, very uh, go-getting, you know, uh, uh, exceptionally impressive. Athens Clark County Police say Zarcy was walking with a friend at the time. That friend wasn't injured after someone driving a Honda Accord struck Zarcy before driving away. Damn. And Buddy just took off, man. She was taken to an area hospital where she died. You know, our staff has gotten, you know, pretty close with her. We're going to do a moment of silence to remember her. And uh, we're also going to, we're going to put up something in the gym to make sure that we don't forget just how precious life is. Heartbreaking. Ashley, uh, do we know if police have made any arrests in this case yet? Yeah, we do not know that at that time. What we do know is that they were able to locate that Honda Accord. They did say that they are still investigating, figure, figuring out who exactly was driving that car. Now, we did find that Zarcy is from Austin, Texas, Justin. Someone who clearly made a big impact in her short life. Thank you, Ashley. So, guys, um, this is the guy who ended up hitting her, Don Terrace Gresham. Um... Hey, man, this dude bugging for real. Left the scene of the crime. I mean, come on, G. Come on, G. Man. I don't want to go in like that, you know what I mean? But, because I know the Greshams and all that kind of stuff, but, I mean, it's just... It's wild, bro. It's wild. For one, as a driver, man, you gotta, you gotta be paying attention. I don't know what he was on. Maybe looking at his phone, all types of. Sh I don't know. Maybe he was geeked up, drunk, whatever. But the fact that he left the scene, man, it, it, it that's what, that's what sinks him for real. That's what sinks him. So, sheesh. Gang violence and other kind of violence. So it is what it is. 